Um, I'm a writer. I play uh, one on the internet. You play one. <laughs> uh, I'm API evangelist. I evangelize the world of APIs to uh, the masses. I think that it's, in a lot of ways, to me, Reclaim is this notion um, that many of us feel right now that some of the things that we really loved about the web, about open technologies, about open learning, about being able to participate freely, um, that we're sort of losing losing the thread when it comes to the potential for the web. So I think Reclaim is this idea of how can we get back, how can we sort of reclaim the technologies, reclaim the networks, reclaim the practices, and sort of rebuild um, rebuild these tools and networks so that, you know, once again we can sort of participate um, on our own terms and not on the terms of the corporations that are sort of increasingly making our interactions online be um, a matter of us giving up our data in order to sort of participate in on the web. Yeah, I would add, uh, you know, for me, it's about it's about defining who we are in this 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 new online virtual world that that we all live in. We've been living it for what 10, 15 years now, and so it's about defining who we are in that world. You know, where it's it's our Facebooks, it's our blog, it's our Tumblr, and defining that and mapping it out, understanding it, teaching people about, to do that for themselves, and then taking it back, being able to take some control and take some ownership of it. Because right now, the Facebooks, Googles, and Twitters of the world all own that, and they have that, and it's us. It's a, it's a digital representation of us, and uh, Reclaim is about teaching people that that's, you know, that world exists and we need to own it. I, mean, I think that one of the things, um, particularly in, when we think about education, we talk a lot about this idea of digital, digital literacy, but we still do a very poor job of helping students understand what that means. And so giving them the skills to be able to sort of go out and be, um, have obviously sort of display their student, have control over their student data, have control over their professional data have control over their online identity, but understand what that means in terms of a sort of a deeper technological understanding of what that means. Not just some sort of a su sort of superficial um, sort of superficial treatment of these issues that we tend to do sort of a you get five minute little lecture on um, you know don't you don't want to post anything on the internet that might harm you later isn't really sort of a, doesn't give doesn't really help students understand technically, um, not just philosophically what this means. Uh, you know, it's it's really important because it's it's about digital literacy, as Audrey said. It's about web literacy, teaching people uh, what are the components and building blocks of this this online virtual world, and really, uh, you know, teaching them to own their own shit and basically like be able to, you know, IT and and technology. You know, IT's classic of like the man behind the curtain. Hey, you don't need us. I mean, you need us. Come get us to do this. You don't need to know any of this. Let let me handle it. We've got the knowledge. And then I think Silicon Valley is just the new version of that, where they're like, you know, they like uh, an ignorant, unplugged masses, and they can make more money off of you in the cloud if yeah. you don't understand any of this and and, and have any awareness as this going on. So they can just totally exploit you and, and take mm -hmm. advantage of what what you're doing, you know, daily online. And it's like if you you know take it offline. Uh, you know, it's like our financial literacy. It's like you don't have to understand how you know the banks work and the financial markets work, but you better be damn sure you know you, you're watching your credit card statement when people are going to be making charges. It's the same with Facebooks and Twitter. You should know who's you know who you've authentic given access to your Facebook data, who's accessing your Twitter or Google data. Um, you should have some some literacy in that world. It's it's digital literacy versus financial or or other literacy. I think that um, in a lot of ways it's it's sort of it is again back to the sort of original vision of the web, right? Small pieces loosely joined. That it's not about if we sort of if we were to reclaim, you know, reclaim our data from Google, reclaim our, our content from Facebook, um, reclaim our, our student information from the learning management system, for example. Um, it's not about then 
building a new massive system that we're going to sort of store everything in. It's, it's this idea of how can we sort of again, how can we sort of think about these small modular pieces that are important to us and then work on helping people build the skills, the understanding and make smarter decisions about what they what they use and why. Um, so for some people, they're, what's important to them might be their photos. And so understanding sort of what does it mean to what does it mean to store your photos on the internet? Not just the actual photo itself, but all that metadata around it. Um, sort of, uh, what happens when you put your photos on Facebook? Do you still own? Do you still own? Like, are you giving up copyright? What does Facebook do in terms of understanding now everywhere you've been and taken a photo and when based on the metadata around the photos? So then, for, for some folks, it might be like bringing, <coughs> you know, taking photos and putting them. Uh, on on a server that they control um, and just helping people sort of make better decisions along the way and building the technology I think to support getting your data out yeah I mean reclaim like what it is I think is going to mean something different to different people <coughs> excuse me and so that's the trick is it's not building yet another massive system it's using the existing open tools and building blocks of the web so you know, ideally it's small, bite-sized, modular, open pieces of technology, JavaScript, HTML. <coughs> so it's difficult in defining what it is. How do you build this? Because it's got to be disconnected. It's got to be modular. It's got to be meaningful to the people who define, you know, that's part of the defining who you are. What is your online footprint? It's photos. It's it's blog posts. So, so then in context of reclaiming that, you know, you have to have tools and services because it could be as much as, you know, I want all my shit offline and I want it all in my closet on a little server I have running in my, you know, my closet. Or it could just be, you know, better handling of where it's at. I really like Facebook. I really like using Flickr. I like using Instagram, but understanding uh, what what privacy, what, what I'm giving up to have it there, you know, so it's not always tool based. It's, it's very educational based. I think that's the fundamental component of Reclaim is that it's it's education with the right tools and process to go with it. I think one of the things I think that sort of has brought this um, brought this to the forefront for all of us is this notion now or this realization now because of Edward Snowden that uh, that all of our sort of all of our information online has sort of um, despite the sort of grand promises of you know freedom and democracy that the web I think uh, means for some of us that it's also also become this elaborate tool for government surveillance and so I think that helping people the stakes are even higher than they you know I think that the stakes are even higher now that this is this is about resisting uh, resisting surveillance surveillance by the government and also sur corporate surveillance as well so I think that um, to me it feels it feels even you know it feels incredibly necessary that we sort of take the steps to be able to ask, you know, ask the right questions and decide what do I and what don't I want to be shared with Facebook and Google and Apple, which in turn means that you're sharing it with, you know, with, with the U.S. government. Uh, I mean, for me, I see the future of Reclaim really being defined by this collision of, of physical and virtual worlds. You know, um, you know, everything from, you know, I want take back my photos and all that and put it in the closet on the server because that gives me physical control. I know that that digital, virtual, intangible stuff's in my closet and I have control of it. Things like that for some people um, to, you know, this whole internet of things colliding with our world. You know, we have drones um, that are digitally controlled, being played like video games by various people and taking photos of our houses and our properties. Um, we have security cameras doing the same thing. So we have very well defined, well, I mean, we have several hundred years or thousands of years of defining what is the self, what is the property, what is, you know, these physical things. And as we're learning to define ourselves online, it's also colliding with these, these, these physical def definitions that are evolving and moving forward. You know, what is, what is, this physical 
thing in my pocket that's tracking everywhere I'm going to serve me better things and know me online, but it's actually invading my physical privacy, um, putting my children in danger potentially. So uh, I think that 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 phys that collision of the physical and digital is really going to be the defining layer for for reclaim and, and teaching people um, how to understand their online selves in 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 light of who you are physically and how you live physically. I mean, I think we have the capability, we have the technological capability to build, to to build things on a different model. I mean, currently on on the on the web, um, advertising is really the business model for a lot of what happens on the web. And so, and it's you know, so then it's based on sort of your clicks and your profile and your data. So we really are instead of this notion of us being able to participate on the web as creators, we are in some strange way sort of this product that's also being sold along the way. But the tech, but that that's not, that's not a given. That's not necessary. That's not actually how the technology has to work. That's how this business model works around it. And it's entirely possible for us to use the technologies and build new technologies that shape this on a different on a different level. That don't make us all have to be um, products to be bought and sold by advertisers. And that don't that, that don't demand that we sort of have this sort of exchange between you know Google and Facebook around our personal data, our profile data, our clicks, and increasingly sort of a, a more and more more and more data about us. You hear these you know you hear stories about what advertisers are able to sort of glean from people just based on their online, based on their um, based on their consumer habits. And so I think that the technology is completely there to have a different to have a different model. So I think we just have to take the steps towards making that happen. Well, and, and educating people enough, creating a literate uh, society masses that we can reclaim this sense of, no, we're not a fucking product. Reclaim, you know, hey, this is my stuff. This is, you're making money off of my stuff you know, don't, or give me a piece of the action. You know, it's it's all these, you know, reclaiming who we are that, that, that being, you know, reclaiming our privacy. No, privacy is not entirely dead. Yes, it's changing, but I'm gonna reclaim this because uh, it's my photos, it's my, you know, it's myself, it's my children, it's my family, uh, you know, so, you know, we're going to reclaim the narrative or that Silicon Valley is kind of like forcing down on us that this is all inevitable. It all is just happening. It's a big technological steamroller that you all just have to deal with. Um, no, we can reclaim a lot of that. Um, I think that people should care because, I mean, I think particularly in, in education, um, I think that there's a certain conversation happening right now that if we just sort of collect all of student, students' data and analyze students' data, that we're going to be able to sort of magically come up with these outcomes that um, aren't necessarily meaningful to students, but are certainly meaningful to, to administrators and um, to professors. And I, I think we need to do a lot better job helping develop um, students understanding of what that means, what it means for them to sort of the ways in which uh, the technologies that they're being forced to use in an education environment are that, that they should have better control over their data. It's their content, it's their learning. And they again, they shouldn't necessarily be seen as being a product of the learning management system. They are autonomous, you know, people who should have much more control, much more say over what happens to their data. Because um, it's, it's your, your data, it's you, it's yourself that's being taken and being owned, co-opted, monetized, uh, surveilled, it's you. And you know, kind of like the the old Indian, you know, Indians who didn't want to have their photos taken because it's still your soul. I mean, as, as, as we evolve and develop online, these digital versions of ourselves, they're stealing that representation. They're owning it. They're they're defining it. And as it collides with our physical worlds, more so this whole internet of things. I mean, we're wearing internet connected stuff. we you know our shoes, our cars, our homes, our smoke detectors. Everything is having the internet. And if they own that representation of your digital self, pretty soon they're going to own your physical self too. So it's it's dangerous. We have to reclaim it at this point. Otherwise, uh, you know, I don't think there's going to be anything left. I mean, I hate sounding that scary, but it's like they're going to totally own and control everything about us. Jim Groom rocks! <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs>